Although celebrities enjoy the many perks of fame and stardom, being in the public eye often comes with a slew of unwanted attention. With the whole world watching, they can often feel intense pressure to keep fans happy with frequent interactions. In the age of the internet, it is becoming increasingly challenging for celebrities to maintain any privacy at all. These invasions of privacy can come in many forms. There have been many doxing cases when stars' addresses or private phone numbers are leaked. There is also a notorious harassment tactic known in some internet circles as swatting. This involves calling a SWAT team to storm a famous person's home, which can be deeply frightening for the celebrity targeted. Obsessed haters and doting fans alike have devised no shortage of absurd strategies to get celebrities' attention seeming not to care if the attention is positive or negative. While it's common to admire one's favorite celebrities and even follow their lives through their social media posts, there are countless individuals who take this fascination way too far. To the point they become stalkers, obsessed fans with absolutely no sense of boundaries, who would do almost anything to meet the object of their affection. Oh my gosh, I'm just 12 in all of these pictures. That's so good. <laughs> One of these disturbing stalkers would take drastic action in an attempt to get closer to his celebrity fixation, Ariana Grande. There's no doubt you must know her by now. Ariana Grande is one of the most popular and admired celebrities in modern music history for a good reason. She's very well known and widely considered an A-list celebrity for her talent and beauty. Unfortunately, these traits would draw quite a few stalkers of her own throughout her career, though one would eventually stand out as the most dedicated and disturbed. What is up, Iwu crew? Today, we will be discussing the unnerving story of Timothy Normandin, a man who seems to have centered his whole life around Miss Grande. This case is not only deranged, but somewhat sad, as it showcases what might happen when a mentally unstable person fixates on an idolized version of a celebrity who wants nothing to do with them. While this stalker's obsession began with online posts and videos, his desire to reach Ariana grew stronger and stronger, and when he eventually took his harassment to the real world, law enforcement were forced to intervene and stop the threat to the pop star's safety. Timothy Normandine runs a personal YouTube channel. The only two channels he's subscribed to wouldn't surprise you. Ariana Grande and Ariana Grande Vivo. Upon first glance, his channel seems relatively normal, with content about hiking and videos of him rapping. But one doesn't have to dig too deep to immediately notice a disturbing trend. Much of Tim's attention is focused solely on Ariana Grande. The oldest video available on his channel was posted on June 12, 2014, and the strange recording is only 1 minute and 29 seconds total, titled, Ariana Grande Addressed. While driving his car, Timothy opens up the short video by proclaiming his love and respect for Ariana before launching into what the video's description calls a recited hip-hop verse for a remainder of the clip. Ariana Grande. One of my favorites, one of my best. Maximum love to you. I'm in the least story, an example of maturity. Get with me and you'll be sure to see life is best when you're with me. While most of Timothy's videos have only a few hundred views, this one is the most watched of his channel, sitting at around 5,000 views. The attention he received was far from positive. The comment section is littered with pleas for Timothy to stop and leave Ariana alone, even before he took drastic action. People noticed his concerning behavior and worried for the singer. In July of 2014, Timothy uploaded another video titled, Step Forward. According to him, it's a public service announcement with a purpose of telling his haters to back off and meet him in the middle. It's a little public service announcement. 
you know, time and time again, many of you think I need to have back off. But I know it's true. Cowards need to take a step forward. Meet me in the middle. He then goes on a rant about the need for peace in the country, which seems to have little to do with the cause for most commenters' concern. Isn't what that, what this country is all about? The United States of America? Unity. Don't we want that? Don't we want friendship? Don't we want love? Don't we want respect? Don't we want honor? Don't we want an end to the violence? Or is that just stuff we preach but don't practice? This manner of speaking, where he seems to spout whatever comes to the top of his head, is a pattern that continually returns in his other videos. After the video where he criticizes his haters, Timothy mostly uploaded random rap videos. It's hard to tell if the lyrics of those songs also have to do with Ariana Grande, but it could be possible. Either way, just a few months later in October, the Ariana focus was back, stronger than ever before. On the fourth of the month, the aspiring rapper uploaded another acapella rap clip. But this time, the setting is bizarre. He appears to be walking through an empty college lecture hall while he speaks. The video is more than seven minutes long, but the repeated chorus of his song is haunting. Ariana Grande, are you getting what I say? Ariana Grande, would you consider what I say? Ariana Grande, are you getting what I say? Ariana Grande, would you consider what I say? Ariana Grande, I'm proving, but you're looking away. Ariana Grande, can I get in your heart today? Ariana Grande, I'm proving, but you're looking away. Ariana Grande, can I get in your heart today? This odd video is titled, Ariana Grande Loved Hardest, which is most likely a reference to the popular song, Love Me Harder, that she had released in September of 2014. His lyrics continue to beg and plead for Ariana to consider him as a love interest and for her to see how good they could be together. Ariana Grande, I've been calling your name. If I was so fortunate to have such money and fame, well, if to your eyes I had a more glamorous frame, tell me, my dear, would you respond the same way? Would you reject all my love, my care, and my worth? This greatest love I give, would you value more than dirt? Ariana Grande. At one point, he says, I'm with you, Ari, forever and always. Why punish yourself with a boy who just plays? I'm your guardian, Ariana. I'm with you, Ari, forever and always. Why punish yourself with a boy who just plays? I'm your guardian, Ariana. I've mastered love's ways. This was a truly bizarre claim, especially coming from someone who'd never met her. As his song finishes, Timothy stands up, grabs his camera, and walks out of the lecture hall into the night, singing the whole way out. Are you getting what I say? Ariana Grande, would you consider what I say? He doesn't seem to notice the people around him as he walks deeper into the shadows. In fact, his stare is oddly blank throughout the entire video. His continued gaze into the camera is intense, yet something behind it seems incredibly hollow. Ariana Grande, can I get in your heart today? Finally, the last video ever uploaded to Timothy Normandin's YouTube channel may have the weirdest title of all. Loving you the hardest, don't beg. This one is only a minute long, and it begins with this telling line, loving you the hardest, 
It's what you begged for. Giving you the hardest, it's what you begged for. I'm a real hip hop artist, so they disrespect so. Once again, he seems to be responding to her song, Love Me Harder, in which she sings the lyric, If you really need me, you gotta love me harder. Somehow, Timothy seems to have taken the song lyric incredibly personally, despite Ariana's huge fan base. Indeed, as his rap lyrics go on, it becomes more and more apparent that Timothy has deluded himself into thinking that he is doing what's best for Ariana. So satisfactory, I'm the best as can be, and I'll always be the best I prophetically foresee. Timothy's YouTube channel wasn't the only online platform where he repeatedly expressed his love for the pop star. The young man's Facebook page was similarly ruled by posts about Ariana. Some exhibited an extreme affection for the singer, but some were rude, in which Timothy seemed annoyed or disgruntled by Ariana's actions. In 2014, he made several strange posts concerning the young woman. On October 9th, he posted a rhyming message to Ariana. Ariana Grande, don't cheat me, I've earned. Are you dating? Are you not? That's their only concern. To who give your up, that's all they want to learn. If to glorified womanizer, well, that's none of their concern. Cause where you'll be in 20 years, they don't care about that. But seeing you kiss that dirty little rat. From there, his words get a little explicit. As he displays open disgust for Ariana's relationship. He ends the Facebook post by saying, My love sets you free, so spite me as you please, and we'll hope it works out but you'd be best with me. That's a certainty, no doubt. It seems much of Timothy's anger is directed towards Ariana's boyfriend at the time, who may have been rapper Big Sean, as the couple reportedly met and started dating in late 2014. On October 29th, he says, When breaking free from that prison, I bring the getaway car. Once again, the capitalized words reference the singer's new song, break free. He continues adding, the place where we'll head will be more blissful by far. If you only knew a love so soft, that love could be harder, you would know not, and may not even recognize it if to your eye it is brought. I don't know how to get you to look, but Ariana Grande, it seems you mistook. The way I love you the hardest for the bait on their hooks. He actually tags Ariana's Facebook page in this post as well. The same day, he shared a status from Ariana's brother, Frankie, who had changed his profile picture to say Problem, celebrating Ariana's new song. Timothy responded with yet another long-winded rap, which featured lines such as, It's for your own good, but you refuse to just look. Don't take it so hard, just heed the input. And even, Do not fear and fret, I pose as no threat. These lyrics directed towards Ariana come off as possessive and extremely unwarranted, as she has the right to date whoever she likes. Still, it reveals much about Timothy's entitlement toward the pop star and how those feelings would soon drive him to extreme action. Sure enough, this online outreach wasn't enough for Timothy anymore, and he began to make real-life attempts to communicate with Ariana. In a strange Facebook post from October 8th, he addresses the celebrity directly, saying, Ariana, I had an interesting interaction with the security at Universal Republic Records on Broadway, New York. I was being thwarted and diverted. He asks if she even got the gift that he had to force them to give to her. Apparently, he had brought a rock for Ariana, and the guards had assumed he intended to use it as a weapon. Chillingly, he proclaims, Ariana, I will be back. I will not be thwarted. I will not back down. This is a worthy cause to fight to the death for. He complains that the opportunity to be with Ariana romantically should have gone to him, but instead, it went to a quote, less worthy, womanizing degenerate who abuses this opportunity he so fortunately got pampered with by pumping nonsensical womanizing garbage into the heads of the masses of the society. The full post goes on along the same vein for quite a while, and while the full text is still publicly available on Timothy's page, there are some disturbing highlights deserving of mention.
Ariana, you can hate me all you want, but at least don't be such a fraud and a flaunt, he says. After his rap is finished, Timothy writes a few paragraphs to address Ariana directly. He says that Ariana's health and wellness are more important to him than his own survival and that he lives and breathes for her. However, his endless adoration is underscored by layers of hate. He resents Ariana's lack of response to what he sees as benevolent attempts to contact and guide her, assuming her silence is spiteful rather than a simple unawareness on her part. Continuing to vent his frustration, he claims Ariana has a lustful and tempting image that is not wholesome and sets a bad example for women. This long Facebook post was then repeated 51 more times in various forms on his Facebook profile. He copied and pasted the huge wall of text over and over again, linking it over other Facebook users' posts each time, in hopes of spreading his message as far as possible. Back on October 6th, he had posted a photo on Broadway, so this may have been the exact day when he tried to infiltrate Ariana's record label headquarters. Timothy's harassment seemed never-ending. When he sent Ariana a bizarre Halloween gift in the form of a 42.5 pound pumpkin for Halloween, the celebrity's record label alerted law enforcement of the noteworthy occurrence, and the police immediately intervened and went to have a chat with the eccentric man directly at his Massachusetts home. They gave him a warning to seize his abnormal and over-the-top outreach to Ariana. Still, this stern talking to had little impact on the stalker's determination, and he only continued to ship her increasingly strange presents. Some of these excessive gifts include eight Yankee candles, dog and cat calendars, a three-piece Kmart mirror set, one $200 K Jewelers anklet, and the aforementioned rock from the White Mountains of New Hampshire. There was no end in sight to Timothy's unnerving generosity. He spared no expense to lavish his love interest with costly presents despite her lack of reciprocation. Eventually, authorities took their threats to the next level, telling Timothy that he was looking at a potential charge of criminal harassment if he didn't stop sending these ridiculous offerings to Ariana. He retorted with a heated Facebook post defining the exact meaning of criminal harassment. His next statement would make his disdain for the police crystal clear. He posted, quote, "...nothing real fair about having your intellect silenced in a room full of ignorance." Around this time, Timothy tried various methods to contact Ariana directly, attempting to send her text messages and even making use of the U.S. Postal Service to send her letters. When those methods turned up fruitless, Timothy really began to cross the line. He started making more trips, traveling all the way to New York and Connecticut to see if he could meet up with Ariana. However, as he continued to come up empty-handed, he kept escalating the scale of his actions. When he took things one step further, his actions would eventually lead to his detainment. It was December of 2014 and holiday cheer was well underway as New York City ushered in yet another white Christmas. It may have been the season's infectious festive spirit that possessed Timothy to make his grandest exhibition yet. Instead of mailing Ariana a Christmas gift, he decided on showing up at Ariana's New York City record label himself, fully decked out in a Santa suit. Instead of receiving a long-awaited response from Ariana, he was thankfully intercepted by security before he could frighten or threaten the pop star. He was promptly placed in a mental facility for three days, but was unceremoniously released afterward, only to continue roaming free. Fox News covered the intriguing story of Ariana's obsessed stalker in this clip from 2014. Officers have given him a warning about that pop star. That's right, the investigation began after her record label contacted Lowell Police. Shockingly, the reporter claims that Timothy had told the media team that he was not deterred by the official warnings he had received from the police. Officers have asked the man to stop or he could face harassment charges, but he tells us he has no intention of stopping. But more importantly, this Fox segment shared three important details about Timothy's case. First of all, phone call audio was included in the discussion 
in which Timothy himself said that his motivation behind sending so many gifts was simply to gain Ariana's precious attention. I was trying to gain her attention, and I thought that was the only way to do it. Second, the reporter shares that Timothy has a hearing impairment, which affects his speech. Normandon tells us by phone he has a hearing impairment, which affects his speech, and that his intentions with the gifts are innocent. Finally, an important detail that Timothy himself explains in the phone audio is that he never had any harmful intentions towards Miss Grande. Police have asked you to stop. Are you going to stop? No, it actually isn't harassment at all, as it is not malicious. Even if you believed these explanations at face value, things quickly become more complicated as he continues to explain. His justifications become more convoluted. The news clip goes on to reveal that Timothy was not only interested in pursuing a romantic relationship with Ariana, but also seemingly a professional one, where he could advise her on how to better utilize her public image to make a positive influence on the world. A large audience I think the way she uses that influence and influences that audience is rather terrible. And why is that? Because it's very womanizing. He also says he loves her and does want something more than friendship. He wants to, quote, serve and protect her wellness. This definitely contradicts his previous claim that he only wanted to gain her attention. Perhaps the most bizarre part of this brief Fox coverage comes at the very end when Timothy explains the meaning behind a symbolic clock he sent to Ariana. In fact, he says after police warned him, he ordered her a clock. They were going to want to arrest me, Universal Records was going to press charges against me. It's all time. Time's running out. Police are going to have me do time. In a similar occurrence, Timothy allegedly showed up at the Connecticut Mohegan Sun Casino in 2015 in hopes of meeting his idol, having traced and followed Ariana there by unknown means. Luckily, the pop star had employed a group of security guards at the location, and they were able to stop Timothy before he could sneak past them. It wasn't until Timothy showed up at one of Ariana's concerts in Connecticut that this longtime fanatic was finally arrested. He was detained for criminal trespassing on that day and was dealt a hefty fine of $5,000. In 2016, at 31 years old, he was found guilty of criminal harassment and received a three-year probation sentence as punishment for his continued creepy and concerning behavior despite the many warnings he received. While many believe that he was clearly mentally ill and not all there, so to speak, they still felt that he had to face adequate judgment for the unrelenting barrage of absurd communication attempts he had orchestrated in a desperate ploy to be noticed by Ariana. Although it's true that he likely needs counseling more than anything now, his long and incriminating history of obsessive behavior could not be overlooked. Even in the face of arrest, Timothy refused to back down and reportedly opposed all notions that his behavior had been inappropriate. He continually failed to acknowledge or understand the fear it could strike in Ariana. While being questioned by the police, it is said that Timothy screamed, it's love, not threats. This alleged statement allows a clearer insight into the stalker's mind. It would seem that he is so deranged with infatuation and spurred on by mental instability that he truly believes he has done no wrong. However, law enforcement clearly have a different point of view when looking at the objective facts of the case. And though they may house some pity for the mentally ill man, they couldn't simply accept it as a valid excuse for his repeated offenses. In Lowell District Court in December 2016, Timothy faced the consequences of his relentless harassment, including the excessive giving of unwanted gifts, as well as unfounded attempts to profess his love for the superstar. The prosecutor handling Timothy's trial, a man named Matthew Bailey, explained that he perceived the stalking to have originated even before 2014. According to him, in years prior, Timothy had simply been a harmless fan of Ariana's music, 
but it wasn't until 2014 that the man's admiration went too far. During an early hearing, a court clinician had diagnosed Timothy as a victim of delusional disorder and paranoia, along with other mental ailments. Based on this information, Judge Ellen Kaulow later made the decision to place a heavy emphasis on Timothy's psychological treatment, and she ordered the stalker to continue with his mental health counseling. According to the local paper, The Lowell Sun, Kaulow also ordered that Timothy abstain from drugs and alcohol, submit to random screens, and not leave the state. In addition to these parameters, Timothy was told to stay away from Ariana and abstain from contacting the pop star or anybody close to her in any manner. If he can follow these rules and keep his distance accordingly while minding his probationary limits, Timothy can avoid facing possible jail time. Hopefully, Timothy has recovered from his unhealthy obsession in the years following his court hearing, but he's not the first person to foster a concerning amount of love for Ariana Grande and he clearly wasn't the last. In early 2020, Ariana was forced to file a restraining order against a stalker who weaseled his way onto her property. The young man named Fidel Henriquez was arrested after reportedly sneaking onto Ariana's estate by following a delivery truck through the gate. He not only rifled through the celebrity's garbage, but he somehow managed to evade the heavy security of the mansion and knock on the front door with a love letter for Ariana, which also featured directions to her house. The enraged Fidel allegedly spat in the face of the officers who arrived to arrest him, and he was later charged with battery and trespassing for his offenses. Ariana and her mother were reportedly scared for their lives after this incident. In legal documents obtained by TMZ, it is reported that Ariana says she is living in fear. Supposedly, this is because the cops found notes in the stalker's backpack upon his arrest. The contents of these notes were disturbing, to say the least. The crazed man expressed a desire and threat to murder Ariana. And though he was stopped before he could do any lasting damage, there's no doubt the incident must have left her shaken up. The five-year restraining order will last until May of 2025. During that period, Fidel is legally prohibited from coming within 100 yards of Ariana or her mother Joan, or any of their belongings or property. He is also, of course, not to contact the family through any medium. As our society has become more social media fluent, our ability to see a constant feed of our favorite star's lives have increased, leading to unprecedented levels of interaction between celebrities and their fans. Due to this emerging style of close, one-sided communication, psychologists have begun to study a phenomenon known as parasocial relationships. This term refers to the one-sided interaction that often occurs between celebrities and their fans in which the audience comes to view famous people as their friends. They may believe that these celebrities are people they know extremely well, especially if they spend a large amount of time watching or listening to them. Most of the time, on the other side of the screen, the celebrity in question has no idea they exist. Although this problem is becoming increasingly prevalent as social media's influence only continues to grow, most healthy-minded individuals are able to distinguish between fantasy and reality, and they respect the privacy and wishes of the stars they admire. But obviously, as we've seen today, some people allow their delusions to take control of their entire life, leading them to do crazy things under the impression that they're entitled to the love of a celebrity. Although celebrity harassment stories like this are not likely to end anytime soon, looking deeper into cases like Timothy's paints a powerful picture of the scary people that famous stars often have to deal with behind the scenes. The life of the rich and famous isn't always as glamorous as it seems. With big houses and fancy cars come stalkers, scrutiny, and the startling lack of privacy. With their whole lives under the careful watch of the general public, it's important to remember that celebrities are real people who deserve the same respect, privacy, and feeling of safety as everyone else. Hopefully, future legal measures can be implemented to save upcoming stars from similar dangerous situations, and cases like Timothy's will become far less common. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you, Ariana. 
Ariana Grande, that's your girl, go get her.